Thank you for joining me today live. We're here on Facebook today, and I thought I would just do a troubleshooting day. What are you struggling with? Is there a particular stroke that you need help with? I have some cardstock here. I have paint, brushes. What do you want me to show you? Show you quick some some quick demos today. You guys gotta like comment down below and help me out here. Tell me what you want me to show you. I've been asked to do some more boot camps. So they're only about twice a year, guys. All right, unless you guys keep asking me, then I'll do more. But uh, about twice a year. And uh, what we'll do is we meet on Zoom once a week for five weeks. And every week we cover all the strokes within those five weeks. That is the fundamentals of every flower or landscape that you want to create. We go one by one and cover all the like the real basic structures of all of them i'm telling you it's the 10 basic strokes we start off with the first day right there's like fundamentals of the very very structure of the 10 basic strokes and then we bump those 10 basic strokes up into daisy strokes and shell strokes we play around with our liner brush and lots and lots and lots of fun guys and many different ways to manipulate those strokes to advance them to different levels. So if you guys uh, don't know me here, I am Mandy from Creative Touch. And originally um, I was named Manda, but friends and family call me Mandy. So that's where I get Mandy from. I'm just, everybody calls me friend Mandy. And um, I've been playing around with creating things, oh my God, all my life. I really have. I started off as a beautician, a hairdresser. I got so addicted to creating with the industry. I ended up in doing nails and eyelashes and makeup artistry and weddings and lots of fun. And I did the beauty industry for over 30 years. So I've done a lot of sculpting and creating and painting and, and mixing colors and all kinds of fun all my life. So now that I'm retired, I had a little bit of an injury on one of my hands and basically I'm done in the beauty industry. I'm really sad about it, but I got to create somehow. So here I am painting. I found one stroke through the nail industry. I used to put nails on and paint tiny little roses on nails. And, um, and then I got addicted to bigger canvases and oversizes and uh yeah i just fell in love with the one stroke technique it's such a quick way to get things done and implement highlights and shadows and blending and all kinds of fun things we had a really fun project last night we did the holiday window for christmas in july <laughs> i underestimated that timing oh my god i guess i did play a little bit more than i um thought i did and uh we definitely ran out of time a bit I went over time, but I kept recording, guys, okay? So you guys get a bit of an extra bonus there that was supposed to be a fun and easy project, which it is, but I didn't say it was going to be fast. <laughs> so we could have probably took our time and did this new classes, but we got her done. We got her done. We stayed late. And to tell you guys about the nighttime classes on Zoom, like sometimes they're just oh, too much. They are very involved. I like to take my time, make sure that you guys are getting it and following along and uh, able to do it and uh see so you guys all popping on here thank you thank you thank you so much um but um yeah we went over a little board and then so i decided that some of our projects that are more advanced and definitely more details to them we're going to do them during the day now and then that way we'll start at one o'clock in the afternoon and if we need more time we have it and then we'll still be done at a reasonable time before dinner time and then that way we're not so tired because even myself, I get so frazzled getting into that late hour sometimes that I can't even think sometimes by the end of the night <laughs> trying to get it all done for you guys. So, yeah, we had a lot of fun last night, though, but um, definitely I have some new projects coming up and the boot camp as well. I'm going to give away a free boot camp today, guys. So I'm going to pick from whoever joins me live today. And then I also been, you know, you guys are struggling, obviously, and you need more help. And I want to offer you guys the private one-on-one -on -one Zoom, which I have on my site already, guys. You can go ahead and book time with me anytime. But I have a special offer for you guys. I'm so excited because I've just finally got to my certifying lead here. I can help you guys who are interested in getting your level one. If you guys know Donna Dewberry and all her cert levels, 
There's a uh, level one that you can uh, get a certificate for, and then she has skill builders as well that really helps you bump up your your levels again of uh, your stroke work and all the different things that she has available to practice with with me too. And they're all private on Zoom, one on one. And um, but I'm just gonna do a general troubleshooting, guys, with you guys. By the end of the day, I'm gonna raffle. Uh, no, I'm not raffling. I'm not raffling. Everybody who comments down below in this live, whether you're here live, whether you catch the replay, just let me know you want some private one-on-one -on -one Zoom time with me to do some major struggling in one way. Maybe it's a project that you already jumped on with me and you're having a hard time. You need a little bit more help to finish it. Whatever it is, I'm going to give you guys a free half hour to try me. Right? How's that sound? You guys want to free half hour zoom with me your first free half hour is free just let me know when comment down below that you you want this free you want to spend some zoom time with me and then i'll private message you and we'll figure out the time that it works for both of us and then i'll even give you the recording of the zoom time too so that you can remind yourself everything that we said in that time so just make sure you have everything ready so then that way you have your paint out your brushes out Hopefully I can see your, your table too and how you're working, how you're loading your brush, whatever your problems are. And um, then that way I can really see you. And then also you're going to be able to send me some pictures after. And then I can also uh, help you with anything that I see in the pictures. Because a lot of times I can't tell by pictures if you've got not enough paint, not enough medium, what your problem is. Especially if you're working on cardstock. I know all the little challenges of practicing on cardstock can be... Uh, discouraging sometimes because you think oh my god if it's this hard on paper how hard is it going to be on canvas but really it is so much easier on canvas guys if you push yourself and practice on that cam that cardstock um, and it looks you know half decent on here it's going to really look great on the um, the canvas when you get there and just don't be afraid of the paint guys it really could be a lot of fun uh, I got a few of you joining me today. I'm so so excited. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hello, Deborah, Cecilia. Uh, she's Deborah's uh, struggling with her roses. And uh, hi, Sue. It's super hot here. Well, today we got some mugginess coming back into us here for Canada. Uh, hi, Dorothy. Um, Cecilia is having difficulty with the chisels of the brush. And then I bought a wooden box to put pansies on it. Can you just sponge the background on like you did in the canvases? Or do I have to put a base coat on it? Um, if you're using the multi-surface paint, you don't need to put a base coat on it. Your paint, whatever choose, uh, choice of color, is going to be your your base coat. It's base coat and sealer paint color all in one. So if you stick to the multi-surface paint, Sue, you'll be fine. Um, sometimes I will sand it a little bit if it's too rough. Or maybe if it's really, really shiny. If you bought something that's already painted with a really high gloss, I will give it a little bit of a buff to get some of that shine off but other than that uh you're good to go on any raw wood like you said it was a raw wood so you should be fine just to go just maybe if it's rough or sharp corners or something give it a little buff um i have a hand injury missing part of my thumb uh right hand of course ah that's you're missing wow um i have a thumb issue but um thank god i still have my thumb um we have to get creative there. I'd have to definitely meet with you maybe one-on-one -on -one and we can definitely uh, maybe come up with some more ideas when I see how you're holding the brush to begin with. And um, because I can't even peel a potato, guys. I really, with my left hand, if I went and gripped the potato and tried to peel it, because my left hand, thank God, I am right-handed. And, um, you know, so I have a hard time doing things too. So I always have to get creative and try to lean the potato on the table more and you know <laughs> try to get it done somehow i'm gonna eat right um and uh so yeah i totally understand struggles of injuries on your hand and arthritis i suffer from arthritis as well guys a lot of carpal tunnel and all that fun stuff uh, build up from all the years of doing the beauty industry um so yeah and then who else do we have here kim hi kim and uh kathy and yes thank you so much for um joining me today 
uh, definitely I have got a couple uh, videos on the roses already on my YouTube channel, Deborah. I hope you've seen them. I have a quick view here on Facebook, but it has a link to the YouTube with a slower version for you. And then I do have the advancing course on roses too, so I hope you will jump on that as well in my intro program. Um, they have... Um, the first six courses you can jump on, but now I have made it to an ultimate package. It's got 12 with all the starting of all the major flowers, the most popular ones. So I do have a huge program, guys. I hope that you're going to jump on uh, with the package deal. And then if you jump on the site member access, it will give you 20% uh, off on future events and uh, VIP access. And you also get a free half hour with me there, too. So you'll get a whole hour if you really want some extra time with me with this promotion that we're doing today um chisel work is part of roses too so uh hopefully i'm going to play around with uh my brush here a little bit and i'll be able to help uh both you guys cecilia and deborah a little bit um definitely playing around with that dolphin nose i have a couple of uh, videos on my youtube as well about the youtube uh about the um what i call the do dolphin nose Right, so there's a couple different ways of twisting that uh, little finishing strokes, you know, up. Um, yeah, so money again. We um, it's all about really trying to keep your um, colors focused, and definitely when I play around on my plate here a little bit, I can. Um, Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, Cecilia and I have already done some one-on-one, -on -one and um, yeah, she can tell you what her classes have been like, <laughs> and uh, definitely with all the uh, practicing that she's been done with me, she felt confident enough to, to get on doing her level one, and uh, she did the home cert there through Donna, and uh, so yeah, I can definitely help you guys. It doesn't matter if you're, you know, don't even want to do level one, you just want to perfect those strokes. You definitely, um, one way or another, we can definitely go. And Sue loves the dolphin nose. I make it look easy, eh, Deborah? From practice, guys, right? It's everything you do repetitively. Don't put it down for too long because you have to practice again when you start up again. You could be making a loaf of bread, homemade loaf of bread. And uh, I've been playing around with clay lately. And it's funny because it reminds me of kneading dough. And it's like, I haven't done any kneading of dough in a long time or playing around with this. And I'm like, oh, this is a workout, you know, but if I keep doing it, you know, then of course you're going to build up some muscles. You're going to build up some memory of, you know, what you have to do to manipulate it and you know, little things that you have to make mistakes with to learn how to get out of those mistakes. And then you never forget those mistakes. And that's what you really need. You have to just keep playing, guys. You have to just don't be afraid of the pain. Don't be afraid to mess up. You know, and don't take it so seriously. We can't all be Picassos in one day. Like, I was in the beauty industry for over 30 years, constantly learning, constantly taking new courses, involving new tricks and techniques coming along, uh, new products, you know, ways of playing. So, <laughs> my bread comes out hard. Yeah, mine don't come out too great either. I'm not a great baker, but, you know, examples of, you know, different things that we do that we weren't born with this knowledge we're not a lot of us are not born artists honestly i was not i am really a copier i need to see inspiration i need to go for walks into the forest take pictures you know and look at those pictures while i'm working i'm not i don't have it all in my brain guys honestly it's just from repetitive playing practicing i've got good days and bad days too you know we'll uh, definitely get more painting and, and more tricks and tips to, to utilize. Like I said, the uh, window that we did last night was a great project that you could change up and make it a summertime one if you want to peek different landscapes through your window, the structure of the window and the curtain and how I did the for wallpaper and everything is basically everything that you need to do a lot other projects. You can change it. And... Um, Bump it up. So I'm always trying to guide, advance advance you guys now and uh, give you more to work off of to uh, bump you up from that intro program. And then, of course, like I said, I do offer the boot camps a couple times a year. So paint, muddiness, chisels, roses, <laughs> dolphin noses. 
All right, so let's play with Engine Red. And wait. And if you guys know me at all, I'm actually a fan of Dirty White. Instead of buying all those baby pinks and baby blues and, you know, you can easily make it with your whites, guys, right? But there is a point where it can get muddy, all right? And in the beginning, when you're first starting out and you're watching Donna and you're, she's like side loading and doing all these crazy blending tricks on her, pay, her plate and you're like trying to copy her and you're getting overwhelmed, then I usually suggest to... Uh, have little side areas that you can focus on and really start to um, blend your areas in a clean little spot on the side just like I said once you get comfortable and you're doing this for years then you even see me sometimes I just make a mess out of my plate and I get muddy just going over and I can still control my color blending by adding more color of one or the other or really focusing on the direction of how I'm pressing on my plate as well. So through playing around, this is how I've learned that um, if you're lazy or if you're uh, trying to like do things too far away or you know flip-flopping, maybe your plate is just way too far away from you when you're trying to blend, all those little things will mess you up and uh, start getting you bloody bleh. we'll start getting you muddy <laughs> okay so basically you're loading up that brush right you're adding two colors on your brush at the same time okay so usually when i blend i even try to make sure that i'm blending uh picking up that paint a little bit over on an angle so that i can get it up on that chisel a little bit higher before i even start Okay. And depending on what type of flower or um, leaf that you're trying to do, sometimes there's different gradients going on in your blending pile. So sometimes we want to have more dark, sometimes we want more light, right? So moving up and down into your blending pile is going to change that gradient that you'll have the different gradients, right? So if you want more dark, I tend to push a little bit on an angle to kind of push that dark up. If I want more white on my brush, I will do a slight angle on the other side and that'll push the white up into the red. When I'm doing stroke work with the dark on the outside, I always flip my plate upside down. So then it's easy to put that little bit of an angle and shove the white up a little bit higher into my red. Okay. So it really just depends on which uh, direction you're doing your stroke work. Okay. Again, I'm adding more red and I'm pushing that up. Now I pushed it way up. So maybe your angle is a little too much. You've lost your white, right? So here I am changing my direction. I'm going a little bit more straight up and down, blending my brush really well. There's a point that there's actually too much paint or it's too globby. That's when you gotta wipe it out, okay? Get control of that paint again. Back to that half and half. Right? And now I have that really nice soft baby pink going on. So that's what I say about the dirty white. It's okay to have dirty white. Because it gives you a nicer, softer, more vintage style petal looking. Right? And then, this is how I do it guys, right? We've been playing for years. You're pushing really hard. Making sure that you have that paint loaded really good up two-thirds up higher on your brush then if i need that little tiny bit more white i can tip on my brush to pick up that extra white then when you go and make your little gradient petal style whatever you're choosing to do 
you're really getting all three colors in there. Nice soft blend of all three. Okay, and that's considered to be still up there with like a three-quarter blend. So understanding your gradients, understanding how to push on your brush to change it or manipulate it. Okay, this is what I've learned uh, through the years that it really makes a difference on how you're holding your brush when you're loading it. And then, of course, really staying focused. Like, this is why I love the palette is because it gives me a little bit more weight for my foam plate. And if I don't have that weight, sometimes my paint, uh, my plate will fall and flip and move, right? So you really got to hold on to this plate so that you have control. Sometimes I'll even lean on my palette a little bit. So then again, I'm just rocking back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I can stay focused to my blending pile being really neat. Okay. So sometimes we'll even load three and four and five colors, you know, and then that's when it's fun to go in and side load, you know, just a little bit more dark if you need it or side load a little bit to uh, pick up a little bit more fresh white. There's lots of ways of doing it. And then if you're working with a brush that's smaller than a size eight, I always say, I always do like a side to side. And I always stick the dark right in the very middle. Okay, then you got to play around with your location on where you're putting your brush in there a little bit more. So if you want that three quarter blend, okay, you can overlap your dark and pick up less white. And if you're running into trouble and muddiness, you're always moving yourself out so that you can always keep your fresh white on the outside. And eventually you have these trails that are going out and out, 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 <laughs> right? And then what happens here? You start moving along. Your dark paint, red, starts to get lighter and lighter and lighter. Okay, so it's really trying to keep focused on controlling your paint, right? Of course, the condition of your brush is really, really important, guys, right? You're going to, you know, really make sure that your chisel is dead on. You're not using these brushes to erase and do really rough work on wood and, you know, because that will break down your brush a little bit more, right? Having that real super beautiful chisel on your brush is so, so important, right? The condition of your paint is really important too. So if it's fresh out of the bottle, usually it's good to go. But of course, on cardstock, sometimes we end up with some dry spots. Right? So this is where we definitely need to have a little bit of floating medium. And when I'm putting that floating medium in, I really push it up so that I'm getting all that moisture up into the deep parts of the brush. Okay? Then when you push down, you're going to have more coverage, right? So definitely on the cardstock is really dry. It sucks it up, right? Taking your time to let the paint go into the paper. If you're going too fast, everything's going to skimp, all right? So it doesn't matter how much paint you have in your brush. You're not going to get a good coverage. But sometimes you do have to slow down. Let that paint absorb. So chisels, again, there's so many little chisel, little foliages that you can practice with, right? Get really comfortable with your chisel, guys, right? And learning how to just gently light up on your touch. If your paint is too thick, definitely when you're doing some chisel work, especially long chisel work, you know, you need that little bit of help with some floating medium, right? So you want to get those lines really, really super fine. And this is a size 16, guys, so this is a pretty big brush. So now look what's happening to my load. I've got a big glob, all right? So really pay attention to your paint, to your brush, how it's loaded. Don't just go flip, flop, flop, and, you know, expect miracles, okay? So definitely you want to have control over your brush, 
Okay, so that's just a very soft chisel. I've got way too much paint going on. I've been kept adding and adding and adding. So again, sometimes it's uncontrollable. I have way too much paint that I don't like. I'll actually just stick my fingers in there and wipe out some of that globiness. Control my paint again. Okay, my little special dolphin nose starts off with that little tiny chisel. Then you're just coming down just gently, pushing down. It's like your comma stroke of the pull. Up on your chisel. So this pull, pressure, up on your chisel, and pull. And I always say to practice on both directions. Doesn't matter if you're left handed or right handed. There's always going to be one that's harder than the other for everybody. You're trying to do them sideways. Right? Some have to be done in different angles. Okay, so I should have over uh, reloaded my brush there properly. Okay, practice them in all your directions. Right? So this is what's going to really help is the direction that you're practicing. Okay, you're not a photocopier. Right? So this way, when you practice in all your different directions, it really helps you become comfortable with manipulating your brush. Hopefully that makes sense, guys. What do you think? Uh, start with Vandy. Oh, thank you so much, Cecilia. I'm so happy for you. I can't wait to find out the results from your all your work that you sent in. Um, I can build a foundation to a house with my bread. <laughs> oh, you're funny. Love to meet you on Zoom one day, Deborah. Um, let's see. Any more questions here? How beautiful. Thank you. Um, yeah, I try to be patient. I, you know, that's my problem. If you're in a hurry, then yeah, maybe you know, won't like me because you know I do like to make sure that you guys understand what's going on and um, take your time and uh, I like to baby step things. And, and when you have my site access, guys, a lot of people love the fact that I step my courses up in little baby step videos so some of them have like seven steps so then that way you don't have to worry about finding the next section to move on like if you have uh, taken you longer to get through that section than my video you're gonna the video keeps going and you you're working and then you have to back up so with my step parts that i have you easily the video ends and then when you're ready to carry on then you just go to the next part and then um, you, it'll follow with you. Where when you get the downloads, it's all lumped into one big three-hour video. So, but they are sectioned off, so you can stop the video and rewind it if you want, and work with them. So hopefully this helps because, like I said, uh, chisel, roses, muddiness—you know, this is all important. It all ties together. Uh, thank you so much for those feedbacks because like i said it, it kind of all combines together into the same problem and struggling areas that i commonly hear and uh, definitely we've got like so many different little ways to bump you up if you want to uh join me on um uh, zoom all right so some of you guys don't want to do it as a group well I'm giving you the special offer to comment down below and say, yes, I'd love some Zoom time with you. And then we will find a half hour that works for both of us and we will figure out what you're having problems with a little bit more. Okay, so because I really want to see you guys in action. That's the whole thing about Zoom. Like we can't get together in person. Zoom is the next best thing, it really is. It's like Skype. If you guys maybe know Skype from back in the day. Um, and haven't tried Zoom yet, it's so easy, guys. It automatically hooks up to mostly everybody's uh, got a camera in their laptop or device. Um, it's, webcams are so cheap now. You can get a, a, a cheap webcam 
hook it up to your desktop and then a little tripod to stand it on and um, hopefully you can move it and push it down so that I can see your table too and how your brush actually pushing down maybe you're not pushing hard enough maybe you're pushing too hard you know so I can definitely guide you guys and help you a little bit more you know, on specific things maybe daisy strokes are your, are your challenge uh, or shell strokes are your challenge you know we can definitely uh, work on whatever you're you're looking for to do I know a few of my girls have already jumped up on the boot camp with me and I give you guys unlimited access to boot camp so once you've signed up to my boot camp once if you still need help the next time I'm doing it, you're automatically invited free, guys. All right, so thank you so much, you guys that have been following me and being part of all my classes and so supportive and being here all the time. I love you guys. Um, and then I've got, like I said, a couple new ones here. So, so there's always three ways of doing everything, guys, okay? So let's dissect things together. Um, this, like I said, this offer that I'm going to do for you guys, this free half hour still stands for the replay. All right. So you just have to find this video and watch this video, comment on this video and even share this video. I think you can share it still off the group, uh, when we do lives. Um, but a lot of times I do edit them and stick them on YouTube too, if that helps. You can share things from there too. Subscribe on my YouTube would be wonderful. I cross kind of go back and forth to both places to uh, YouTube and to Facebook. So you guys on YouTube, uh, if you want to see more videos, more questions, definitely join us on Facebook. And uh, definitely would love to uh, meet with you guys and uh do more troubleshooting with you or maybe a free class is going to come up soon on facebook here as well so i'll be posting it soon keep an eye on the events also i'm trying to get better at sending emails out so please check out your emails and uh subscribe to my site if you haven't done it yet and uh thank you thank you thank you so much for joining me today have a happy 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 painting day